Have you ever bought yourself a GoPro? And you buy it generally to go on a holiday somewhere or you've got some special sort of event going on. You might be going, say, whitewater rafting or mountain biking. You go, I want some kick-ass footage of that. So you go and buy a GoPro. Then at the end of it all, that GoPro goes into a drawer, gets forgotten about. One day you go, I'm going to go on another holiday. It's a few years later and you go, there's new GoPros. What am I doing? I'm going to buy a new one or do I use the old one? Everyone does that. Very few people actually buy a GoPro and use it every day. But what if you could do other things with a GoPro? What if you could take photos like this? Stick around, I'll show you how to do it. G'day guys, I'm Shane Mostyn. This is the channel where we learn all about mobile photography and as of today, a little bit of GoPro stuff as well. So if you're into mobile photography or photography that's a little bit unusual, photography with small censored cameras, this might be a channel for you. Every week I do two videos all about how to uh, take photos with your mobile phone and your GoPro. I specialize in astrophotography, light painting, lots of editing, and there's going to be heaps of tips of tricks that you see along the way. So subscribe to the channel and you'll see videos every week. So you might be wondering, Shane, why you've got GoPros on this channel? Well, one, a few of you guys have actually asked me for this, if you can actually do it. And two, well, the sensor size of a GoPro Hero 8 Black, which is the camera that I'm recording on right now. So the sensor size, what actually picks up all of the light between that camera and the iPhone 11 Pro, it's, it's, it's a bee's dick of difference. They're very, so, so close together, it's worth doing. And I can tell you now, the difference between the two, it's pretty significant. So if you've been watching my videos before, you know that there's a lot of things to consider. Well, there's not actually a lot. There's a few things to consider when it comes to astrophotography. The first thing is the location that you shoot at. So where we are today is at Mount Hope. It's a massive sort of granite outcropping of rocks. It's called Mount Hope. Is it a mountain? No. But if you look out here behind, look how flat that countryside is. It's flat as a freaking billiard table. And this rocky outcrop here is one of two that's sort of close. There's another one out behind called Pyramid Hill. Um, so I like to come out here for this sort of photo because it gives elevation that you can shoot below past the subject to get the stars. And it works pretty well. And there's so many opportunities out here to do it. So where I am here in North Central Victoria in Australia, we are really lucky that we have virtually no light pollution. The nearest town is Kahuna where I live, it's about 10 minutes drive that way and there's only like two and a half thousand people there, it's, it's a pretty small town. The next one is Echuca and it's about uh, 60 k's I think it is, roughly 60 k's that way and in some of the photos that we take you can actually see uh, Echuca, the, the lights from Echuca on the horizon. So light pollution is a really big deal. So where we are here, um, we're pretty lucky. I'll link up the top here uh, ways that you can find um, online what sort of light pollution is around the area that you intend to shoot at. The second thing you want to consider is the position of the Milky Way, that, that orange gaseous sort of cloud that you see in some of these photos, where that's going to be in the night, when. So there's a few apps that we can use. The one that I use most of all is Photo Pills, and I'll link up the top here how you use that. But Photo Pills is a really good app. You basically use the camera on the phone to superimpose the Milky Way, the galactic core of the Milky Way, over the top of that photo that the camera is seeing, or the image that the camera is seeing, and you can fast forward just by swiping left and right, and you see the time up the top there, and you can see then what time you need to be out at night to take the photo that you want to take. The next thing is the weather. If we look around right now, the weather behind me and all around is shit. So we're probably not gonna get this tonight. Luckily, I only live 10 minutes away, so if it does not clear up tonight, well, I'll come back another night and we'll do this for you. But you wanna keep an eye on the weather. And the last thing you wanna keep an eye on is the moon phase. You don't wanna be out here in the middle of the uh, full moon because there's only to be too much light. The photos that we take, they take up to 30 seconds. So 
you want to avoid that moon. The next thing that we want to consider is a subject. Now sure, the stars are a pretty cool subject, but what makes a photo better is when you've got something in the foreground. It is the things that you shoot in the foreground, they can be natural things, they can be artificial things, they can be new things, they can be old things. It doesn't really matter. What makes these photos really cool is that things that you see during the day, like this rock, you think, yeah, it's just a big rock, big deal. But imagine if there's a nice big cool star cluster up behind it, and it's nighttime and we light paint it with different uh, torches from different angles, it can look pretty bloody cool. And that's what makes these photos really stand out. So this is the subject that we're going to photograph tonight. Just a big rocky outcrop, nice crack through the middle. Why is that crack important? Well, it's for light painting, and we'll talk about that in just a second. We just want to work out where the Milky Way will be here. As I said before, I use photo pills. We want to work out where the Milky Way will be behind this in the sky. So I'll open up photo pills, turn on night augmented reality, and bring the rocky outcrop here into the photo. And what I'm going to do now is fast forward the time, and you can see there in the photo, in the screen capture, of where this will be. So at about seven o'clock tonight, it'll be sitting right up there behind it, beside it. So if I move around this way a little bit, you know what, that'll be a really, really good photo. So <clears throat> right here is where I want to take the photo from. So now that I'm here and I know I want to take the photo from this sort of angle here, I'll set the GoPro up on the tripod facing up towards the rock and it will also capture the stars up behind it here. When it comes to light painting, there's a couple of different tools that I use. One is the Lytra torch, and I'll link a video up the top here how I use that. And we'll use that tonight to put a torch down behind here and light the rock from the side. So it's got a little bit of backlighting if you like. And we'll also use this torch here. It's just a torch that it's dimmable. So it goes through power cycles, as you can see there. Um, it's also a rechargeable torch. I find it really effective for this sort of photography. Now the camera's there, and I, so therefore I don't want to be painting the light from directly in front or behind from the camera. It'll just be like a flash, and that's no good to us. It won't really show the cracks in the rock really well. So we want to be able to move across obliquely from the, the camera and shine a torch at an angle from the camera and it'll really show the cracks in the rock really well. Let's have a quick chat about the settings that you're going to use on the GoPro. Um, so if, obviously it's going to be a photo, so go into photo mode, um, then go into night mode. So you've probably already got a setting there called night. I'm pretty sure the GoPro actually comes with one called night. Now go into the pencil icon next to that and we want to change the output to raw. What raw is going to do is going to capture more of the data in the photo and we can manipulate that a bit better in editing after. The shutter speed, leave it at 30 seconds. Timer, leave it at three seconds. What that will do is once you push the button, the, you're not touching the camera when it takes the photo. In night mode, in uh, night photography, that's really quite important. ISO is the light sensitivity that you're going to get from the camera. Leave it no higher than 800. So set it to 800 as the maximum and you should be fine there. Sharpness, put it to low. GoPro has a really, really bad habit of over sharpening the photos. So set it to low. What it does when it over sharpens things, it lets in, it tends to bring in more noise into the photo and we don't want that. Color, leave it to flat or put it to flat. I think it, by default it's on GoPro, so change it to flat. The lens, uh, because we're shooting raw, um, I think it's going to go ultra wide anyway. Um, and that's it, we're good to go. Now, as far as gear goes, when it comes to shooting this sort of thing, because you just see that we shot, we're going to be shooting now for 30 seconds, so we can't be doing this handheld, it's just not going to work. So this is the, the setting I use for, for vlogging, um, I was using it in the beginning of this video. The GoPro is in a, in a housing here, it doesn't have to be. The GoPro Hero 8 comes with the two little legs that fold down, you can put them onto any GoPro mount anyway. So you don't need to have this, I just like this because it makes the GoPro Tonka tough and I can also mount lenses on the front there if I want to. <clears throat> what you do need though is a tripod of some sort. Little Joby tripod here is perfect I think 
for this sort of camera. Um, and you would have seen when I set it up just before in front of the rock, it only sits about a foot off the ground. And when we think about what I said before, you want to be low, the subject wants to be a bit higher because the Milky Way and all the stars is higher again. So having a camera or a tripod that's only like a foot tall, that's fine. If it's not high enough for you, well, the beauty of this little sucker here is you can mount it onto tree branches and logs and whatever else you really want to. Tripod is an absolute must though. The camera on a tripod, 30 seconds, you're going to be surprised just how bloody easy this is. And I know, though I'm going home, you can never be untold. The past it is real. All right guys, obviously it's dark. The clouds have gone. There's a little bit of cloud out in the western horizon, but I'm pretty bloody chuffed to say it's clear as clear up in the sky right here. The rock is sitting right there. The tripod with the GoPro on it is sitting right here at my feet. And the sky is that clear, I can actually see the galactic core going out the left-hand side of the rock here. So what we're going to do, because we're shooting raw, we have the option, or we always have the option to shoot ultra-wide. With photography with the GoPro, it's generally not something that I would recommend shooting ultra-wide. But because we want to get so much of this galactic core into the photo, we're going to do that. Now, because we're doing that, we're angling the camera up at about 45 degrees. So right on the edge of the bottom of the photo, we should be able to see a little bit of grass in the bottom of the rock. And the rest of it, we should see a lot of stars and a lot of the galactic core. So we've got it set up with the way we had it set up um, today, what we spoke about. So uh, let's take a photo and see how we go. I was gonna turn these lights off, so you'll be in darkness for a bit. Well, I've just taken that photo and it's bloody awesome. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really surprised just how, how bloody good that is. Um, yeah, have a look. <laughs> oh, holy wow. That's, that's amazing. Um, I thought that photography of the Milky Way and the stars, the astrophotography with the, with the uh, iPhone 11 Pro, I thought that was really easy. Um, and it is, that is so much easier. And <laughs> for a sensor, the same size, well, it's not the same size, it's a little bit small, little bit larger than the iPhone 11 Pro. Um, that's bloody amazing. All right, because we shot that in RAW, <laughs> I'm still chuffed with that. That's, I wasn't expecting that to be as good as it was. Um, because we shot in RAW, uh, what we'll do with that now is we'll, we'll take that home and tomorrow when I'm a bit more awake, <laughs> um, we'll edit that in some Snapseed and, and I'll show you exactly what we can pull out of this photo. And looking at that now, just off the back of the camera, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty bloody good. All right, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to say, that was awesome. All right, that was pretty good. Let's bring that uh, photo into the iPad and we'll bring it into Snapseed and we'll do it a quick edit. All right, first of all, we just need to connect the iPad to the GoPro. It's pretty simple to do. Then we'll go into the media. Then we'll go and find one of those photos that we took last night. One of the raw photos. I took, well after I finished recording, I took a few. But we'll use this one here. This one looks pretty good. Now when you download that, it downloads it to the app that's on the phone or the iPad. Then you need to bring it from that app into your photos. So we'll do that. <clears throat> now that we've saved that, we'll open up Snapseed. When you're in Snapseed, you open the photo from the device. If you're not familiar with Snapseed, have a look through the channel. I'll put a link up the top here. I've done lots of reviews and tutorials on Snapseed. So here's that photo. We'll go into Tools. We'll go into Tune Image. Now in Tune Image, we'll go to Brightness first. And we'll increase that brightness and we're going to increase the contrast. Also with the ambience, we'll increase that and decrease the highlights. And we'll bring the shadows up just a little bit. We'll bring the warmth down because we don't want it to be too hot, this sort of photo. We're going to cool it down. We'll probably use the, um, the white balance shortly to do that. I'm not happy with the contrast. I'll increase that a little bit as well. So hit the tick, go back into tools. Now we're going to go to the structure and the sharpening, which is the details tab there. 
and we'll increase all those just slightly. From there going to brush, now brush is a pretty cool tool, you can use it to do some really local sort of adjustments. And we're going to concentrate here on the core, on the Milky Way core, and we're going to just give it some more saturation. What we're going to do now is the selective tool, and we're going to do some selective edits on that core. So you put one, the first dot there onto the core, increase the brightness, increase the contrast, and increase the saturation, and we're going to pinch in so that the affected area is small, just on the core. We'll go hold that, go copy, we'll put it down below there a little bit, put paste. Now it's affected the whole image, we want to bring that down a little bit, so we'll bring that closer together. And we'll do that a few times now through the core, and it'll bring out details in the core. And that actually looks, that looks pretty good. I'm going to change the white balance here to make it a little bit cooler. I like the Milky Way photos to be a little bit cooler and I generally increase the tint a little bit into the magenta side of things to give it a little bit of a purpley sort of tinge, only slightly. From here we'll go back into the brush and the dodge and burn tool. We want to increase some of that shadowy area in the foreground. So we'll leave it on increasing the dodge and burn. We'll go and put some on the rock and some on the uh, areas in the foreground there. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Once we're done with that, we will hit save a copy and that, therefore you keep the original one as well. I think for the size of the camera that it is, the size of the sensor, it's only a little bit larger than the iPhone 11 Pro, which is a pretty good camera in its own right for how simple it is. The GoPro though, the GoPro Hero 8 Black, it's, it's dead simple to take photos at night um, and get some good details in the galactic core. So thanks guys, I'll, uh, I'll see you on Friday.